Hey everybody, it's Crazy Bean Carol. How you doing? Today I'm going to be showing you guys my cube collection as of January 2021. So really quickly before this video starts, because it's going to be a long one, uh, I made two versions of this video. There is a long version and there's a short version. You're currently watching the long version where I'm going to talk a little bit about each puzzle, but if you're more interested in just seeing the collection and what cubes I have, there will be a shorter video also posted where I just say the name of each puzzle. I will also link that video down in the description box below. All right, so let's get started. Here, so here's a bunch of my lame, unnecessary things that I like to make. Um, these two one by ones are made out of corners. Uh, this one is made out of Legos, I think, and I stickered it using construction paper and packing tape. This one is just like a chunk of epoxy. <laughs> Here is an uncompleted one by one by two. Actually, I think I was gonna make a one by one by three, but it never worked out. Here is a Lego one by one by two that actually worked out. This. And a failed one by one by three that I tried to make out of a core and two center pieces. I didn't let the epoxy dry. <laughs> Here is my one by two by two, one of my absolute favorite puzzles in my collection. I don't know what it is about it, Anytime I have it, I always bring up that I love it. I just don't know why. <laughs> Here's a giant one by two by two I made. Uh, I know a lot of people have made one by two by twos out of like mini two by twos to get a proportional puzzle, but I decided to make a giant one out of normal size two by twos. So <laughs> here's that. Here's the Shang Chao two by two. It's clearly missing half its stickers. Uh, I, I don't know why I have it. I should do something very random with it, I think. Here is a really old Shang Chao two by two that I sticker modded to this hideous piece of garbage. Here is a two by two I sticker modded. I don't even remember which two by two this was. It's not very good as I can tell by the turning. I made some weird like nether star <laughs> pattern on it. So this is uh, a sticker mod I made. There was a store that gave like these little stickers with like coffee and stuff. Um, and I collected them. I have quite a lot of them. Uh, and I was like, hey, I have a two by two that I don't necessarily have a particular use for, so why don't I sticker mod it? It's an interesting design, I guess, like all the little monsters are the same color, the orange side or you know, yeah. Here is a Wit Eden 2x2, one of my very first puzzles, and I think maybe my first 2x2. Two two. I think I heard J.R. Cuber back in like 2012 um, say that this was a 2x2 two two he liked, and I was like, why not? I'll just see how it is, and I mean, it's an old 2x2, two two, definitely not up to date at this point. Uh, but I did like it at the time. Here is the Mofang Jiaoshi 2x2, as you can tell by this sticker. Uh, I actually got this for my dad who wanted to learn how to solve a 2x2. This is the Guoguan Jinghen. This is my main 2x2. Uh, my friend Michael Asuzano, who you might have seen in a few of my videos, recommended this cube to me and I got it and I really like it. I think this 2x2 is the Yupo. Um, a lot of people were wondering like why I got it because it's kind of random if I'm being honest. It's not like top notch two by two, but it's not like horrible either. I think I watched um, hashtag Cuber's video of like what two by two is best for you. And the Yupo sounded like one that would really fit my turning style. This is the Angstrom Valk 2. It is pretty high quality though it isn't my main. I prefer the um, Zinghen. Here is my Guoguan Zinghen TSM two by two. Essentially you can pull the caps out using this tool right here. This tool is difficult to use but basically you can rotate this sort of inner part to raise the cap of all the corner pieces and then essentially get a larger two by two if that's what you would like. Here is a chi, I believe, whoa, two by two by three. Uh, it is not proportional to the normal three by three. Here is a uh, three by three. As you can see, the pieces are definitely not the same size. Here is a Z one by three by three. Uh, this is also known as the floppy cube, but it is a little bit special in that it is a super floppy cube, so you can turn it like this. This is my domino puzzle. Uh, it is a 3x3x2 cuboid. Uh, just a fun little thing. It doesn't shapeshift or anything, obviously. This is a very interesting puzzle in my collection. One of my favorites, actually. This is an original 1980s Rubik's Cube that my dad gave to me because I was not around when this came out but yeah this is the original rubik's cube it's the old logo the japanese color scheme where white was opposite blue and yellow was opposite green weird construction orange that blinds me uh it has the worst turning quality ever <laughs> it's so bad because it's that old uh but i'm definitely not gonna like fix it up to try to make it faster i like the fact that it's super old 
because it sort of fits because you know it is old it would be weird if i had a 1980s rubik's cube and it was like finger trickable here is an original rubik's cube with stickers this is actually not mine uh, a friend gave it to me this is my very first rubik's cube the first one i ever got uh it is rubik's brand obviously it has the tiles but it is not the new version that's like all tensionable and stuff i lubed it with like aquaphor because, you know, I knew what I was doing. Here's a random Maru 3x3 I have. I don't know why I got it. I think a long time ago I was looking on the cubicle and it was like, we'll no longer be selling soon. And I was like, <gasps> I must get it. And now I have it and I don't know what to do with it. Here's a random Gans 357 I have. I got it a very long time ago. Here is the Gans 356 Air Grand Master Edition, something along those lines. It is a limited edition cube. I got it uh, for Christmas in like 2016. I really wanted it because it's a limited edition and in purple. So here we have an MF3 RS. If you're wondering why it's still in this packaging, it's because I don't know what to do with it. Um, a long time ago, I bought this package from the cubicle and got an MF3 RS, intending to give it to my dad along with this MFJ2S, something along those lines. But basically I got them so that he could learn how to solve them, but then they sent me an extra one by accident, I think, or maybe I accidentally put two in my cart. I don't know, so now I just have this here. I have these two Fangshi puzzles. I think they're the Fangshi Shuangren, something like that. I don't have much of a use for them because Fangshi puzzles were never good, <laughs> let's just say. This one was like a DIY puzzle. I think I got it just for the DIY factor, and I probably just picked the cheapest one. Here's the problem, though. For some reason, the caps on the centerpieces just fit into the puzzle, and like now you can't get them out, at least I don't know how. I did not tighten the puzzle enough when making it, so now it is just permanently on popping. You can just see how loose it is. I got this white one in an E3 Cube Store mystery box or something. Here's a YJ Guanlong in its packaging. I think I just wanted to keep my first ever technically speed cube in its box, just because. This is my Moyu Along version 2. It is. I think my first ever main, like this is the cube I used to compete at like Manhasset spring 2015. Uh, I'll probably have this forever, just for sentimental reasons. Here are two Moyu Tanglongs I have. I really liked this puzzle when I first got it. Um, this one is a little bit scratchier than this one, which ended up being more buttery. I think I just lubed this one a bit more. But yeah, I just, something about this feeling I really liked. I'm not sure why. Here's my X-Men Tornado. It's kind of interesting. It never really stood out to me. Uh, I did get it just out of curiosity to see what it was like. It's fine, I guess. It feels weird. I think it has a popping problem. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of where I left it. I just got it. Wasn't a big fan. Here it is. Here is my Moe Weilong GTS. I did compete a lot with this cube. Uh, it's pretty decent. Uh, sort of fits my old turning style. I'm more into like the buttery smoother cubes now that are super quiet, uh, but do have a sort of bubbly feeling, I guess. This one is much more um, clacky, more crisp. Here is a Guoguan Yuexiao 3x3. I do really like the feeling of this puzzle. I remember liking it when I first got it. It's sort of interesting hollow feeling that I had never really felt before. Here are my six force cubes. I believe they're made out of the Cyclone Boys 3x3s. I did do a time lapse of me making them, which is quite a fun process if I'm being honest. I would definitely do it again, even though I already have force cubes. This cube is a very random puzzle uh, that I don't really know where it's from. It's like alpha something, I don't know. I got it in a mystery box, I think, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I took it to a competition and asked TPC to sign it, so she did. This is the Guoguan Yuexiao EDM, and essentially uh, what makes this cube interesting is that it has easily adjustable magnets. So you can see here, here's the magnet and you can move it up or down depending on how strong you want the magnets to be. So I'm currently moving them up, which I believe makes them weaker. Uh, this is the Dian Tengyun M, I think. Uh, it's a very soft feeling puzzle, uh, not loud at all. Like it's very, very quiet. This is the Valk 3. I actually won this in the programming cubers like giveaway a long time ago. I was able to get it set up with sort of the premium line type thing. Uh, this basically was my main for the majority of the time. It's not my main anymore though. Okay, so here is a cubing classroom gift box set consisting of five mini 3x3s. 
I still have it in its package just because I like having them in this array, except for one of them which is out, it is the biggest one. And this actually was my main for a bit, uh, it fit my small hands, and I lubricated it, I magnetized it, I just set it up really well. And yeah, I still like it a lot, um, I often bring it to competitions as like a backup and sometimes even as the cube I compete with if I'm feeling it that day. Here is the Moyu Weilong WRM, it feels very light to me. Here is the Cubicle Yulong version 2M. Uh, this was also my main for a while. Um, I still, it was my main um, up till very recently when I switched to the RS3M. I kind of alternated between this one and a mini 3x3 from a cubing classroom set. Uh, this cube is quite heavy, uh, if I'm being honest, compared to the mini 3x3 I used as well as the RS3M. Um, but it does have just a very buttery smooth feeling and I was getting some really decent times with it. This is the YJ Guanlong version 3. I got it in my economy cubes comparison. Honestly, it feels pretty similar to just the normal Guanlong. Uh, kind of average, not really something I would use. This is the Chi Warrior W 3x3, I believe. Um, it's a decent cube, uh, especially considering its price, because this is another one I got in my economy cubes unboxing. Here is the Chi CLW, a third cube I bought in that economy unboxing. Uh, it has an interesting hollow feeling. I do like it, just not my favorite. Here is the Yushin Little Magic 3x3. There is a magnetic one out now, but this is just the non-magnetic one. I got it in my Economy 3x3 unboxing. And finally, the last of the cues from the Economy unboxing. This is the MFJS Maylong 3x3. I absolutely love this cube when I did that comparison. Um, I was considering making this cube my main, which is really surprising because it was super cheap. It doesn't have magnets. It wasn't even set up. I just put some DNM 37 in, but after using it for a while, I just started to really like the like buttery feeling it gave off. It just was really clean and it was so airy, very fluffy. So you may have also seen a video I made comparing a bunch of Maylongs because I really love the budget one I got in my economy cubes video. So uh, here's four of them. They are all magnetic, so they are Maylong M's, essentially. This one is just the cubicle one, this one is the angstrom one, this is the mystic one, and this is the slurry toss one. I did a video comparing all of these, and I decided on which one was my favorite. Here is the RS3M, which is currently my main. Um, I just really like how um, effortless it is to turn. It's really smooth, fits well with my turning style, and uh, yeah, I'm just- I like it a lot. A lot of people ask me what my current main is, so uh, to everyone who's wondering, this is my current main. Here is the Repulsion 3x3, which you may or may not have seen recently because I unboxed it a few weeks ago. Basically, the main thing about it is that it contains magnets that actually repel each other. Within the core, there are repelling magnets, which gives it a sort of unique bumpy feel. Here I have a bunch of random 3x3s just from miscellaneous places. This at one point was like a princess cube, and then I took all the stickers off and put my own on. Uh, this one someone gave to me. I don't know why it's like dissolving. This one was also something someone gave to me. It's a little keychain. This is like a superhero thing. Yep. Yeah. And this one is uh, a mini 3x3 with weird colored stickers. Here's a Lego cube. <laughs> you guys may have seen a video about this. Uh, yeah. Essentially, you can pop the Lego pieces off and uh, yeah, put them back in the solved state. It's a cool collector's item, but you know, what do I do with it? This right here is a dollar store cube. No idea what brand it is. I don't even think it was a dollar. It was one of those like one dollar and up stores, which that's just called a store. Uh, I saw this cube and I got it because I don't know. And then I had no reason to have it because I don't know. But then I needed a cube to do my underwater solves when I go on vacation. Uh, I like to do those videos where I just solve cubes in different places, talk about my trip a little bit. Uh, it's pretty fun, uh, and I need a cube that I don't really care about, so I just use this one. Uh, I do just take it under the water and solve it. I hope there's no, like, mold growing inside. This is my fully magnetic cube. These used to be so popular with cubers a few years ago. Um, people would make them out of dice, and then there was this company that started selling them made out of all sorts of dice, you could get them in whatever colors imaginable. Uh, I personally don't have the one made out of dice, clearly. Um, this is the one that actually looks like a Rubik's Cube. Here is the Mala Cube. It's a very difficult puzzle to solve and quite similar to the Sudoku Cube. This is a Sudoku 3x3. 
Uh, I believe it's the hardest type of 3x3 three three to solve. Um, it's essentially what it sounds like, the game Sudoku, where you're supposed to get one of each number on every side. It's really difficult. I don't think I was ever able to do this. I have these two Cubics tubes. Uh, this is a puzzle that came out a while ago. Uh, it's an interesting concept, essentially. It is a 3x3, three three, but the pieces are all um, certain pipe shapes. And when it is correctly solved, you can run a marble through the entire thing and it will, in fact, come out of the bottom. Uh, I got these two for free at like MIT Spring 2015 something. Uh, they were just giving them away for free. It was a sort of promotional event. This is my Oscars treasure test. A lot of people have probably seen this puzzle with those like big jewel type tiles. Uh, somehow for Christmas, I got one that has these like normal stickers. Inside contains treasure, also known as my Maru Nano cube. Blue is the best color of the rainbow, so that's why it's in blue. This is the Yushin Love Cube. It comes in this fancy box that I decided to keep because it, well, it's fancy. Um, and this is the actual cube. It is a big 3x3 with uh, pictures of like random Valentine's Day stuff. Uh, the cool thing though is that it actually, if you push this button and open it up, there's a uh, compartment where you can put stuff in. Here's a Void Cube. Uh, it is by Rubik's Brand. As you can tell, it's not the highest quality Void Cube, uh, but it's just a collector's item because there's no there's no, there's no no center. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do this cool mod where they put like a golf ball or like a ping pong ball inside. Maybe I should do that with this. This is the Land Land 3x3 Diamond. It appears that it is missing a sticker, which uh, makes sense because the sticker was very slim and they tend to peel easily. A friend gave this to me. Um, I did not personally know where it came from. It, they just gave it to me because it's a, it's a cube and I, I like cubes. Now this puzzle right here is glow in the dark as you might be able to tell from the greenish plastic. And instead of colored stickers on each side, there are mahjong tiles. I did not purchase this puzzle, a friend gave it to me, uh, but I do like it just because it's very unique and I haven't seen it before. Here is a 3x3 I got from Japan. I was in Kyoto as you can see up here. And on each side, there are these pictures of different places, different things. Uh, I think it's really cool. I'm glad I was able to find a picture cube. Uh, I don't get a cube every time I vacation, but I did really want this one because it has pictures unique to the place I went to. This is the Rubik's Impossible. I kept it in its package just because I like the way it looks just as a piece in my collection. Uh, I've yet to get this thing solved. Gives me a headache, you know. Here is a cube I got from Disney World. Um, I also kept it in its package to preserve it, as you can see by the dust on here. I don't play with it often uh, because I want to keep it in good shape. So this is the world's smallest Rubik's Cube. It's it's not, there, there are smaller ones. But the world's smallest is a sort of like brand, I think. They make like little tiny things. So here's a Rubik's Cube. I again kept it in its packaging just because I think it looks nice in it. Uh, just it, it's nicer in here than if I broke open the package and just had a small cube. Here's a Harry Potter Rubik's Cube. Yikes. I don't think I've ever um, shown it because when I got it, I didn't bother making a video about it. I just wanted it because I really like Harry Potter. Um, and I saw this cube at, I think, a Barnes and Nobles. So I just had to get it, you know. Here is my 3x3 that I did some art on. Uh, I just took 3x3 and I decided I'm gonna paint on it. So I just painted some various designs as well as my logo and the YouTube logo on here. Uh, it turned out a little bit strange, but I like it. So this cube I happen to be assembling right now is actually broken. Uh, I got it from the dollar store. I think I dropped it or something, which is why it broke. And the fact that it's from the dollar store also kind of explains why it broke, um, which is a little bit disappointing. Not because I wanted to, well, it's falling apart. Not because I wanted to speed solve on it, <laughs> but because it does have signatures from uh, quite a few cubers. Um, I figured a big cube is better for signing. So as you can see, DG Cubes did sign this uh, this side. Uh, Derby Cuber signed this side, and I think Hashtag Cuber yep, signed this blue side over here. <laughs> so it's just a cool little thing, but it's broken. Here is a uh, 4x4 Rubik's Cube. It's so low quality, I don't even want to turn it. This here is my first ever speed cubable 4x4. It is the Moyu Aosu 4x4. You can see the yellow side's been like scuffed because it's just, you know, been tossed around for a while. This is the Guansu 4x4. It's honestly just kind of old and bad. <laughs> This is the Thunderclap 4x4. Uh, again, if I'm being honest, one of those 4x4s that never really stood out to me because they're just one's way better now. Here is my Chi Wu Chui 4x4. 
And, okay, here's the thing. It was my main for a while, but I really don't like it. I know a lot of people said this is like a revolutionary, amazing 4x4, and I've never found it that amazing. It may have something to do with my deep hatred for 4x4, but also I think I have like a weird, questionably defective one because it feels not smooth. Like it, even when I'm just turning it slowly, it, it's like sticky on the inside almost. I brought this to a competition and my friend Michael Asuzanu who was there was like, yeah, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> I have two Valk 4Ms. One of them has strong magnets while one of them just has normal magnets. To be honest though, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. This is the Angstrom Aosu GTS2M. It's one of those Angstrom puzzles. Here is the Moyu Aosu WRM. This is actually a very light 4x4, especially compared to some of the Angstrom puzzles I have. This is the Bo Chuang 5x5. My first ever 5x5, I got it at Manhasset 2015, I think. Here is the Valk 5M. It's currently scrambled, as you can tell. Here is an Angstrom 5x5. It is the Angstrom Ao Chuang 5x5 GTSM. This 5x5 did come with a set of other Angstrom puzzles that I got. And one thing I noticed is that they were all quite sluggish. This one especially, but considering that I didn't break it in all that much, it makes sense. Here is a 1x1 Pyraminx. I made this from a Guanlong Pyraminx. I just took a tip and a sticker. Here is a Guanlong Pyraminx. Uh, it is not a great pyraminx. It is very, very boring. It does not have any, like, mechanism to click the pieces in place. I ended up using, borrowing some of its parts to make a one by one pyraminx. Because I had no other use for it. Here is the Moyu pyraminx. Uh, quite old, nothing too special about it. Here is the Chi pyraminx. It's actually my only other Pyraminx besides the Moyu one. And I prefer the Moyu one over this one. This one just has a weird feeling to me that I don't really like. So I just use it as a backup. Here's my Pyraminx crystal also in its package. Cause it, I just like the, the packaging as a whole, the colors at the bottom, the limited edition sticker. It just looks nice. And I don't want the, the actual puzzle to get damaged. So I just keep it in here on my shelf. A mini Skube Ultimate on a keychain. Here is a Moyu Skube. I think this was my first ever Skube. Of course I got a Moyu one. Here is a Tongs Design Skube, I think. I got this when I did my clearance puzzle unboxing. Here's a cheese Skube. I think it either was sent to me accidentally or I just got it in a random package. Clearly I haven't used it all that much, but I could mod it. The X-Man Wingy Skube. This is currently my main Skube. Even though it's uh, from a while ago, I mean, it suits my Skube needs, which are not all that much because I don't do Skube, but I am trying to learn how to get faster. Here is a Square Zero mod. I first saw this type of modification uh, by DG Cubes. It's essentially just a bandaged Square One. Here is my very first Square One. It is a Calvin's Puzzle Square One. I don't know why I chose to get a Calvin's Puzzle Square One. I might have gotten it at like a Barnes and Nobles or something, but it is, let's just say, quite a low quality Square One, super old. Here is the Yushin Little Magic Square One. Though I don't do Square One, I do acknowledge that it does have some very nice turning. Here is my Kilominx. Uh, people call it the Kibby Minx because that whole math thing, you know? This puzzle was very popular when it came out and a lot of people wanted, to, wanted it to be a WCA event. Here is the Yuhu Megaminx. I believe this was my first Megaminx. Uh, it's decent, kind of lumpy, if I'm being honest. Here's the YJ Guanhu Megaminx. I got it after I had already had the Yuhu Megaminx, I believe. So this one was a bit disappointing compared to that one because I just found that it had a lot of like locking up issues. Here's the X-Men Galaxy Megaminx, the stickered version. Uh, this is a much more up-to-date Megaminx, I would say, compared to the other two, at least. Here is a clock. I actually lubricated this, as you can see by these stickers, because I had to break the case to actually lube the puzzle. I lubricated it because I wanted to compete in clock at one point, but uh, I never actually got to compete because the competition I went to, there was a fire alarm that went off. It was a false alarm, I think, but they ended up having to cancel the clock event, so yeah. Here is another clock. Uh, it's the exact same one as the previous one, except uh, I just used it as a backup. I have three Rubik's Magics, two of which are actually the same design. I think I got these in like an E3 cube store uh, mystery box thing. You've probably heard me say that a lot, but it's for the Clarkson Golden Knights. D don't know or care what that is, but I have them now. But I also have this one here, which is a normal magic with just rings on it. 
and it's very much uh, broken in. Here's a puzzle known as the Yuanfang 2x2. Uh, it's very interesting shape mod, I guess. This is my Yushin Panda. His name is Peebo, and I can twist his head around. Here is the Rubik's Bear. Uh, I don't believe I ever named this, because we have a superior bear, let's be honest. Here is my Curvy Copter. Um, it's in white, which is kind of rare to see in my collection. I actually did not choose this puzzle. I got it in one of those E3 Cube Store mystery boxes. Uh, I never solved it, just never took an interest in it, but maybe I should get around to that because I should at least solve a curvy copter once if I'm a cuber, you know. It's very stressful though because there's so much jumbling. Here's my Rubik's Orbit. I actually unboxed this in March of 2020, which was the beginning of quarantine. <laughs> this puzzle is really hard to get your head around actually, but once you figure out that it's actually basically just a two by two, it's way easier <laughs> to solve than you think. Here's my gear ball. Um, one of my uh, oldest puzzles I have uh, in terms of how long I've had it. I this is the Yushin cake puzzle. It's interesting, as you can tell, it's got some weird colors. It's, it's a cake. Um, this cube would be really fun to have in my collection if it didn't lose its caps basically 24 seven. As you can see, there's one missing here. This green one always pops out. It's, it gets really frustrating because you can lose these caps really easily. Here is my UFO cube. I love this puzzle. When I first got it, I became really obsessed with it. It is like fully broken in and lubricated from the amount of times I've solved it. Here's the Ivy cube. Yeah, it's just a fun little collector's item. It turns very smoothly also, which is nice. I believe this is called the six spot puzzle or the six spot cube or something. Reminds me of an Ivy cube, uh, just with a more complex feeling to it. I have both because I'm a hoarder. This is the Mefferts 4D8, a very obscure puzzle that I haven't seen all that many videos about. This is the Pentacle Cube. Don't mind the star within the circle, that means nothing. Here is my Dino Cube. It is arguably one of the easiest puzzles to solve. It can also be used as a weapon, as you can see by how sharp the pieces are. This is the Land Land 3x3 Diamond. It appears that it is missing a sticker. Here are my Mefferts eggs, they're metallic. I'm not gonna go through all of them individually because you sort of get the idea. They're exactly the same with different patterns. Uh, hello, you can see me? But yeah, I just love the way these look, so I keep them on my shelf away from the rest of the cubes. Here is my 3x3 barrel. Um, one of my favorite mods I've made because it turned out a lot better than I thought because I actually used a belt sander. Uh, the stickers are not great because I cut them myself, but uh, yeah, this is a very classic mod to make. Here is a concave cube barrel I made. Obviously I couldn't use the belt sander to make it a nice barrel, so when you rotate it, it is uh, lumpy. Looks like a turd. Here's a mod I made. It's a cornerless 3x3. <laughs> Very low quality stuff. Here's a Fisher cube I made. Uh, it is quite low quality, as you can tell by the poor sanding, poor epoxy work. Uh, I think I just got impatient with, you know, filling the pieces properly, waiting for the epoxy to dry, and then sanding it properly. So that's why I have this lumpy thing. It is a functioning Fisher cube, but not happy, <laughs> not happy with how the mod turned out. This is another one of those kind of bad mods I've made. Like, look at this piece. What was I thinking? Here's a Fisher Scoop, if you can even call it that. It is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I think it kind of speaks for itself how just lumpy it is. Here are all of my mini mods. I had a lot of fun making these. Uh, probably some of my favorite mods just because they're small. Uh, I had a bunch of these like little party favor Rubik's Cubes. Uh, so three of- well, actually not three of them. Six of them were used for Siamese cubes. Uh, not sure why I felt the need to make six, but okay. Um, I have a mini cutter cube. Yep, it, it works. Two barrels, one's an octagonal barrel and one is just a normal 3x3 barrel. I like this little 3x3 barrel. Despite the fact that I did not use a, a belt sander to make it, I'm still pretty happy with how it turned out. A bandage cube, not so happy with how this one turned out. Also one of the stickers fell off. This is a mini Fisher cube. Honestly, this one isn't too bad, except for the fact that it's missing some stickers. And a mini house cube. Fine, except for the fact that it's missing all of its stickers. It's actually hard to see because it's it's really black. Okay, here's my 3D printed one by two by five. I have a 3D printer, obviously. Um, and I saw a video by Z3Cubing where he printed a bunch of puzzles. 
and I really wanted this 1x2x5. I just think it's so interesting, and I love these like flat cuboid type puzzles. Uh, I printed it. It did not turn out very well, just because that's just you know what happens when you 3D print puzzles. Uh, they have an interesting mechanism. Uh, mine is very loosey. <laughs> Lucy Goosey. Um, it's painted with black nail polish, which killed every single brain cell I have. I have no more. The stickers are like from random scrap stickers. The yellows don't even match in the shade. It's a bit of a mess, um, but it was more of an experiment to learn about 3D printing. This is a mod I made. It's probably one of, if not my favorite modification I've ever made. It is called the Zock Cube. I first saw it on uh, Nathan Wilson's channel, and uh, yeah, I really like the way it turned out. It's not perfect, obviously, but I had the correct tools for it at the time, so that's why I was able to make it. And yeah, I'm just really pleased with how it turned out. Here is a what I call the Skewb Skeleton mod. It is a skewb missing its centerpieces, which is why it looks like a skeleton. And if you're wondering where the centers went, I actually used them to make this gigantic one by one. Here is a failed modification I have. It is was well, was supposed to be a 4x4 rhombic cube octahedron. It doesn't turn properly, as you can tell, which is why I consider this a failed modification, but you can see the general idea of what I was trying to do. Um, this is a failed 2x2x5 I tried to make. JR Cuber, back in the day, made a 2x2x5 out of a 4x4 and Legos and dice, I think, and I was like, that is so cool, and I was like, I'm gonna do it, and I failed. Here is a ghost floppy cube. I think I asked for this for Christmas or something because I was hoping to mod it, something along those lines, but I never got around to it. So yeah, I should probably get on that. Here is the Very Puzzle Snowflake. Uh, it is a quite a unique puzzle that I did make a tutorial on. It's pretty self-explanatory on how to solve because I was able to figure it out on my own. But basically it turns along the sort of slice, as you can see. Uh, but on top of that, these sort of tips of the snowflake also turn. Here is an X cube. It's quite an interesting looking puzzle and pretty fun to solve actually. Here is my Wit Eden 2x2x4. This puzzle is quite a fun one to solve. I also have a tutorial about how to solve this puzzle. It's currently scrambled, so I should probably get around to solving it. Here's my vSphere. It's a very confusing puzzle. It turns like this. Uh, and the pieces also slide. I, I don't quite understand this puzzle, and it just takes up a lot of space. It's it's quite ugly too, if I'm being honest. Like here is my snake puzzle. A lot of you have probably heard of it. It's uh, not exactly a twisty puzzle. It's essentially a long line of these plastic pieces, and you have to roll it up into a ball like that. There are a lot of different versions of this puzzle. Clearly mine is in blue and white, but uh, there's like red and white, green and white, like a multicolored one, a lot of different versions, a lot of different sizes. All right, here's the Rubik's Trimid. A very interesting one in my collection. I made two videos or maybe even three videos about this puzzle. I don't understand it. <laughs> At first when I took, when I got this, I just took the whole thing apart and put it back together. Then people said you're supposed to like solve it by twisting it like this. I don't understand it. It falls apart pretty easily. It looks cool, I guess, but it's it's strange. This is the... Oh, would you look at that? A certain Yushin cake cube may need this. But yeah, this is the Orbo puzzle. I don't know why I got this. It is not really a twisty puzzle. It's just this ball with like foam on the inside and like little balls with holes. I don't know. This puzzle is called the Missing Link. Uh, I think it was made a really long time ago, like it's one of those retro puzzles that people have. It's not exactly a twisty puzzle, it's more of just a toy puzzle. This right here is a lube and lock puzzle. You may have seen me get it on my uh, clearance puzzle unboxing that I did a while back. Uh, unfortunately, I think I broke it. <laughs> I took it apart in the video. Uh, I did manage to get it back together, as you can see, but now the lock, which you're, you're supposed to like push this and you can take this out, and it, it's a thing. It, it doesn't work anymore. I don't know if I broke it. So at this point, it's just a block of colors. This speaker I got is not a puzzle, but it does turn a little bit. <laughs> this middle slice turns. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a speaker, which is pretty cool. Here are some non-twisty puzzles that are essentially like blocks connected with a string. 
This is a wooden snake puzzle. You basically unwind it and then figure out how to fold it back into a cube. Same as this one, this one's just blue and smaller. And this is called the Cubot. Uh, basically, it is a robot. Um, that folds into a cube. Uh, here's the robot type shape, sort of. And then you have to fold it back into a cube, just like that. Here's a whip it puzzle. It's kind of lame if I'm being honest. It's just, just like a sliding thing. It's a, a barrel consisting of these pieces that you have to slide around and you have to align all the colors. This is not a puzzle, but it is from the cubicle. Uh, it's a little fidget spinner. Here I have this non-twisty puzzle. It's like a star infinity cube flips like an infinity cube, but then um, when you open it up, it's also two stars. So yeah, that is my entire cube collection as of January 2021. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time on Crazy and Carol. Bye!